Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. As you can see outside of here, you probably don't know where I'm at just by the looks of that, but I'm in the north suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, and a lot of people have been asking for more true crime, and especially John Wayne Gacy. I've been getting asked a lot of times for uh, the Gacy home location and a few other sites lo um, related to Gacy's crimes and his life, and today that's what we're going to do. Now, I want to start this video off by saying by no means are we glorifying or condoning anything that he did. John Wayne Gacy was a disgusting human being. He was an evil man. And the crimes that he did were just absolutely horrific. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about the crimes just from a historical standpoint. And uh, yeah, let's go take a look and we'll see what we can find. Now, this road right here is Miami Avenue. And there's a little story about... The apartment building up here on my left. Now John Wayne Gacy was a maintenance man in this apartment building and his mother actually moved into the ground floor of this building also. But there was a retired Chicago police officer named Bill Dorsch who lived a few doors away at the time and he remembered Gacy holding a shovel during the winter and it was at night and he confronted him about it and asked him and he said something like there's not enough time in the day and uh, he he kind of remembered that, thought it was a little bit suspicious. But he said that neighbors to this day tell you about how they would see him digging trenches, and not just holes, but actual trenches, and dragging heavy bags across Miami Avenue in the night. So that would have happened right here. Now where they would have come from, I don't know. Where they would have went, I don't know either. But... Part of the whole thing was is that they thought that he was burying bodies in this yard right here, in this fenced-in area here on my left. And they ended up doing a search, and they didn't find anything, but it was kind of a, a very pathetic attempt at a search. They covered it with a tent, and they dug just a little bit of what you could see. But this whole back area, it said that there still may be bodies buried under here. But this is where Gacy was a maintenance man and also where his mother lived. But you could see, let's see if we can see back there. But it is possible that there could still be bodies buried under here. But we will probably never know because they gave up on the search. They didn't, they didn't want to reopen the case, but they decided to do it. Then they dug just in a very small area and then they gave up. But this right here was the apartment building on Miami Avenue where Gacy's mother lived and where he himself was a maintenance man. Here's one more look at it from across the street. It kind of makes you wonder if maybe things happened here that nobody still knows about to this day. Now this intersection right here is Milwaukee Avenue and Oakton. And it was in front of this McDonald's right here that everything went down. This is where John Wayne Gacy was actually taken into custody by police. Now it happened on December 21st of 1978, just a little bit after noon, and five de police detectives pulled over Gacy and arrested him right in front of this McDonald's right here. Now traffic is pretty heavy right here, so I got in my car to film the rest of this and show you, tell you a little bit more. Now five police detectives pulled over Gacy and arrested him right in front of this McDonald's across the street. Now they have renovated this McDonald's. It doesn't look the same as it did back then. If I can find a picture of it, I will put it over this. But um, it happened on December 21st, 1978, just a little bit after noon. And the police only had him on a minor drug charge, but they were watching him for a long, long time and they were ready to take him down. Now, they were afraid that Gacy might try to kill himself or someone else before they had enough evidence to get a search warrant and check out his Summerdale house. Now, the police eventually discovered 29 bodies on his property. They found 26 in his crawl space and three buried elsewhere. 
Four other victims were dumped in the Des Plaines River, and he was one of the most notorious serial killers of all time. Oh, well, thank you for that. Got the dump truck right in front of us. But that's what happens when you film these videos. You just never know what's going to happen. But it was right in this intersection right here where Gacy was taken down and arrested. So his last moments of freedom were right here. Now, I'm not sure if he actually went over to that McDonald's and was able to enjoy a happy meal before he was taken in. But, uh, I mean, this is where it all went down. This is where it all ended for, for Gacy, at least in terms of uh, his freedom. Now, we just arrived in the neighborhood of John Wayne Gacy's old house, and I wanted to tell you a little bit more before I walk up to the house. Sometimes neighborhoods like this don't like you uh, doing things like this, so I wanted to do this before I get out and actually show you the house. Now, the house was actually bulldozed in 1979 after he was caught, but he killed 33 victims in this home. 26 of them were buried under the crawl space, and I believe three others were buried somewhere else underneath the house. Now, the the horrible things that happened in this house are just unimaginable, but John Wayne Gacy wasn't always... People back then would, nev would never have guessed what he would become because he was an upstanding member of society at the time, so people thought he was a business owner, he was self-made, he had money, um, he was very active in local politics. He even... Um, he organized a lot of community events and things like that, and he ended up uh, doing an event with uh, Rosalind Carter, the wife of President Jimmy Carter then, and he was very well known, very well liked around here, and nobody would believe the fact that he did what he did, but it all happened in this house. He also was very involved in a local clown organization, and he had a reputation or... or um, he was he performed as Pogo the Clown and Patches the Clown, two different uh, clown types. The suits I just showed you at uh, Alcatraz East Crime Museum, they have the original suits. But this is the home that where it happened. Now, they bulldozed it in 79. The house that stands there now was not the house that was there at the time, but it's on the same property. Now, they changed the address. The original address was 8213 Summerdale. And they changed it to 8215 because of, uh, you know, what happened there and probably to deter people. But this house has been for sale many, many times over the years. It's said that there are a lot of spirits on the property, if you believe that. I definitely would not feel comfortable living in the home. It was for sale not too awful long ago, but we're going to walk by it and I'm going to show you exactly where this happened. Now there is a basement in this home which is kind of creepy to me because that's exactly where the crawl space was where 26 bodies were buried. So I'll take you down here and I'll show you um, where the house used to be and everything else will be just walking along the sidewalks and show you Gacy's old neighborhood. So let's go. This is the infamous Summerdale Avenue. Now all these buildings look to be pretty old, so I'm sure all these were here when he lived here. Very old sidewalks also, so these would have been the same sidewalks that he walked on back in the day. Now people started noticing weird smells coming from his home, and that's eventually what started to get people curious. He kept putting limestone down under his crawl space to try to fix the smell, but that didn't quite do it. This is a very interesting neighborhood now. There's a mix of old homes that were here, obviously when he was here, and then some larger ones. But this right here on the right-hand side, this is the property where Gacy used to live. This is the 8215 home across the street. That's pretty clever. Skeletons and skulls fitting. But this is where Gacy took 33 lives on this property right here. That is really cool over here. 
I hate to change topics there, but and this right here would have been Gacy's neighbor's home, which looks to be original. So I'll double back and I'll show you the home one more time from the other side of the street. But this is Gacy's old neighborhood. Now we're on the other side of the street. I'll give you one more look at this. Now this would have been his neighbor's house right here. So it's very possible whoever lived here at the time could have been one of the people to complain about the smell. But this is the home right here, or this is where the home stood. This is the, obviously the new home, but the old crawl space would have been just under where this driveway is. Here's another look at the surroundings. Pretty quiet street. Now as we wait for these little guys to uh, cross the road, we're at Maryville Cemetery right now in Niles, Illinois, and it's said that this is possibly the location where John Wayne Gacy was heading when he was uh, taken by police at, near that McDonald's. Now this is where his parents are laid to rest, and it's also said that this is where John Wayne Gacy himself may be laid to rest, although it's not marked. This, this cemetery, I've heard rumors that his plot was bought and paid for um, years and years and years ago and that this is where he's laid to rest. The cemetery absolutely says that he is not here, but I, I mean, you wouldn't really want to admit that somebody like that is in your cemetery. But we're going to go and we're going to see if we can find the final resting place of his parents and possibly Gacy himself. Pretty close to O'Hare Airport here. You can see that you generally uh, catch a lot of airplanes. But if you're curious about John Wayne Gacy's parents, the main part of the cemetery or the front gate is back that way. And then he is in, they are in the very back part of the cemetery. But for a little bit more information, John Wayne Gacy had a horrible upbringing. His father was very strict, very abusive, and Gacy was born with a, a heart defect, and his dad kind of viewed him as being a little bit of a burden and a very weak human being. And then he was struggling with his sexuality, and that didn't help matters any either. But uh, his dad passed away in 1969 before he ever saw any of the horrible things that Gacy did. And his mother passed away in 1989. But this is the final resting place of, sorry for that, of John Wayne Gacy Sr. He was a World War I veteran, 1900 to 1969. And then his mother, Marion Gacy, 1908 to 1989. Now it is said that Gacy did visit out here to uh, to visit, pay his respects to his dad from time to time, but it's also said that this is where the final burial location of Gacy is. Now there's no other information out there. The cemetery absolutely denies this claim, but nobody else knows where his remains actually are. Now I've heard from, from a couple different sources that they do believe that he was here, that these plots were bought and paid for. The plot to the left of John Wayne Gacy's father is there is an unmarked plot right here so it is possible that he could be here and nobody would ever know it but is this the final resting place of John Wayne Gacy let me know in the comments if you happen to know anything but um, as I said this video is it's not to glorify what John Wayne Gacy did or who he was, but to remember those victims that lost their lives that really didn't have to. But that's all we have for you for today from Chicago. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care, everybody.